let's combine these two in a column called date and have a state so we know that on 28th of december 2018 it was failed on 29th again so we are going to create a column called state which basically tells on every date what was the status failed or succeeded Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This channel, Avid Data Science, is all about trying to learn various concepts of data science by practicing a lot of questions. This video is in continuation of the Advanced SQL 50 series where we are trying to solve 50 advanced SQL problems or topics like select, basic joins, basic added functions, sorting and grouping, advanced select and joins, subqueries, and advanced topics like window functions and common table expressions. In this video, we are going to solve this question called Report Contiguous Dates and try to learn from it. So, yeah, let's jump right in. So, this is the 50th video of the series called Report Contiguous Dates, and the difficulty level of this question is hard. And if I look at the companies, this question has been asked in. So Facebook, very important question. Let's look at what the question has to say. We are given a table called failed with one column, failed date. Failed date is the primary key that is column with unique values for this table. This table contains the days of failed task. Then we are also given a second table called success date with another one column called success date. Success date is the primary key for this table. This table contains the days of succeeded task. A system is running one task every day. Every task is independent of the previous task. The task can fail or succeed. We are asked to write a solution to report the period state for each continuous interval of days in the period from 1st of January 2019 to 31st of December 2019. Period state is failed if the task in the interval failed or succeeded if task in this interval succeeded. Interval of the days are retrieved at start date and end date. Return the result table ordered by start date. Okay, so let's go through this example and see what we basically need in our output. So here we have various records in the failed table as well as succeeded table. So let's look at, so we need to start from 1st of January 2019. So 1st of January 2019, it was a success. Then on 2nd and 3rd, so all the three days, it was a success. And then 4th of January was a fail. So the first should be period state is going to be succeeded. Start date 1st of January 2019 and end date 3rd of January 2019. Then on 4th of January and 5th of January, the period state was failed. So 4th of January to 5th of January, it was failed. And then on 6th of January, it was succeeded. So that is what we have in our output. Now, if you remember the 44th video of this series was finding a very similar kind of stuff where we developed a logic. Let me go through the logic very quickly that what we discussed. So here, let's suppose we have some numbers, some of them are continuous and some of them are not. So for example, the number we have is 5, 6, 7 and then 11 and 12. Now, if we rank them based on ascending order, so this will be assigned rank 1, 6 is going to be assigned rank 2 and so on. If we calculate the difference between the number and the rank, the continuous numbers are always going to return the same difference. So 5 minus 1 is going to be 4, 6 minus 2 is going to be 4 and so on. And the moment the difference changes, it means that there is a discontinuity, right? So now once we have this kind of stuff, then what you can do is you can simply group by the difference column because it is basically 4 and 7. They are signifying that there are two different group, groups. And in this particular group, what is the minimum number 5 and maximum number 7? Similarly, in this particular group, what is the minimum number 11 and maximum number 12? Now, we can use this logic to basically extend in our solution here as well. So the first thing that we should do is since the failed task as well as the succeeded task are in two different table, why not we go ahead and combine this into one particular table and have another column which basically tells on a particular day did the task fail or succeed. So this is what we have, right? So failed table and then the succeeded table and what I'm saying is let's combine these two in a column called date and have a state. So we know that on 28th of December 2018 it was failed on 29th again. So we are going to create a column called state which basically tells on every date what was the status failed or succeeded. So let me go ahead and start doing that from the table called failed. Right. So first thing we are going to do is perform a union. So from this table called fail, what I'm doing is I am return me the failed date as date and create a column and fill it with values called failed and alias this as state. And then what you do is you do the same thing, but with the succeeded table and union them. So basically what you are going to do is union this with return success date, right? So success 
date as date and succeeded as state so succeeded as state from the table called succeeded okay let me go ahead and run this let's see what do we get in our output so if i look at my output this is what we have this is the same thing exactly that i just showed you right so here we have all the stuff now what we can do is we can save this in a common table expression called ct right so basically we union the dates so let me go ahead and write with common table expression as and then this entire thing goes into parentheses once this common table expression is created then what we are doing is for every particular state let's try to rank the dates in ascending order so when we say failed right so the first rank is going to be assigned to 28th of december second failure is going to be on 29th of december third failure is on 4th of january 5th of january and so on right so we are going to assign ranks based on the state so here you have rank 1 2 then 3 4 similarly for succeeded 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so how can we do that basically from the common table expression we are going to have return both the columns and then let's create a row number right so let's rank them row number over partition by partition by state and then order by date and then let me alias this as rank and let me go ahead and run this okay so if we look at it so what do we have is rank 1 2 3 4 and then you know 38th of december 31st first all this we have the ranks right just like we saw okay now what we are going to do is once we have the dates and the ranks then we are going to apply the same logic instead of having the numbers and the ranks we have the dates and the ranks and if we subtract the two we are going to end up with the same difference here the difference was a number in our case it is going to be a particular day so what i'm saying is let's save this entire thing into a common table expression cte2 right so cte two and here we are writing chained common table expression i have already discussed the syntax and how it works in detail in our previous videos so ct2 this entire thing goes into parentheses again and then what we are doing is from this common table expression 2 we are going to keep all the three columns and then we need to subtract so there is a function called date subtract from the date column i need to subtract what interval rank day and let me alias this as group you know let me switch to excel again so basically what we are doing is subtract date minus these many dates right because that is going to give you dates that can be used to basically group these two are continuous dates so if you subtract them you are going to end up with the same date similarly from 30th of december 2018 till 3rd of january 2019 everything succeeded so if you subtract these two columns you are going to end up with the same date right okay so similarly what we are doing is we are, we got the things right so if i go ahead and run this let's see what do we get in our output so if we look at our output this is what we get exactly the same thing that we were discussing now once we have this then what we can do is now the question says that if i go back to the question the question says we are only interested in dates between 1st of january 2019 and 31st of december 2019 what i can do is i can store this entire thing in another common table expression right so cte3 alias as you know and then this entire thing goes into parentheses again and now from this common table expression 3 i am only interested in those rows where the date column is between 1st of january 2019 right and then and 2019 december 31st right so this is what we need to make sure of so if i go ahead and look at this so these are the only rows that we are concerned about and then what i can do is i can group by the 
group column as well as the state why we need the state because we need that in our output right so the whether it failed or succeeded we need that on our output so if you only group by the group column you won't be able to return the state column right because that is a property of group by that we learned very early in our series as well so what we can do is we can go ahead and write group by the group column and we do not need anything regarding group right we just created this as a ticker to identify various continuous dates as separate groups so group by this and group by the state as well because we need the state in our output return the state column and it should be aliased as period state and now from each group the minimum becomes the start date and maximum becomes the end date so minimum of date is your start date right and maximum of date is your end date and this should also be ordered by start date in ascending order so order by start date in ascending order okay let me go ahead and run this this is accepted and our output is same as expected output let me go ahead and submit it so pass all the test cases so this is accepted and this is how we do it so very tricky question but if you know how we can use the logic to find the continuous dates we already learned about this in question number 44 what we basically did was let me switch back to excel so we combine the two tables into one and have a column called state which basically tells every particular day did the task fail or succeed once we had that then by every state we rank them and then we use the logic that if the dates are continuous if you subtract the date and the rank column you are always going to end up with the same number if the dates are continuous and once we have the identifier we can use that to basically say that okay in this particular group what is the minimum date and the maximum date since we were only concerned about dates that are in 2019 so 1st of january till 31st of december we are only you know going to look at these shaded rows and then we found for every group what is the start date and end date so yeah, this is how we do it let me know if there is a better way or more efficient way to solve this question let the solution be in the comment section below and i'll see you guys in the next video